Hello developers, hello security experts. Today I want to show you my next Spring Security video. It is about Spring Security in version 6, which is also part of the new Spring Boot version 3. And I want to talk with you about authentication and authorization based on roles. In the previous video, which you find if you go to the blog articles I share with you um, below in the description of the video, um, then you will see this blog article. Yeah, you can change the language to English. This is the first article about Spring Security for Beginners. You find also another YouTube video where I'm showing you the first steps, but um, if you are already advanced and want to hear about the roles, yeah, then be with me in this article, which is, let's say, the next step. Okay, so I have a demo application prepared, and that is what we achieved so far in the previous video. We have a simple web application, which has two pages, it has already a security configuration, and the security configuration is like this. We have one security filter chain bean, which is added to the Spring security filter chain, and here we define how our application should behave and how the security authentication and authorization rules for our application are. So we do this configuration and uh, we have to define how to authorize the HTTP requests coming to our application. And we are doing this with the request matchers. And if the URL matches slash admin, like localhost 8080 slash admin, then we say the user must be authenticated, must be logged in. For any other request, like any other URL, uh, we give full permission so that the user doesn't need to be logged in. Can be an anonymous user, can be any kind of user. He can see and check everything except for the admin page, which is blocked. And I have a controller with this uh, yeah, spring controller, which you know from web applications. And um, this controller has two get methods, as you can see here, one for the admin page and one for any other page. And the idea is in case of any page, we give back the index HTML page. And in case of the admin page, we give back the admin page and we hand over the logged in user um, to this page. Yeah, this was also explained in the previous blog article and in this previous video. There are two simple pages. That's just time leaf templates. For the index page, we check if the user is logged in, then we display the username and offer a logout button and uh, switch to the admin page. If the user is not logged in, he can log in on the index page. And the admin page is just like um, telling us uh, that we need the role admin and showing us which roles we have. Okay. The Cradle configuration for this project is also pretty simple. It's uh, Spring Boot 0. Dot, uh, sorry, 3.0.2, as you can see here. Um, so it's current Spring Boot uh, version. And we have Java in action in version 17. And then we have, of course, the Spring Boot starter security dependency. That is the main reason for this video, of course. So we must have it. And we have for web applications, Spring Boot Starter Web. For um, the HTML templates, I'm using Timeleaf HTML template engine, so that's why we need also Timeleaf. And the other two dependencies are for quicker restarts whenever I change code and for testing. And testing is today not the topic. Yeah. So we can go back to our security configuration now, and we see that I have also um, the default login activated. And for the logout, we have some special configuration. If the logout was successful, I want the user always to be back on the index page where he can re-log in. Yeah? So, so that is so far our 
security configuration if I start the application. Then there will be a default user because so far we didn't define any users and that is what we want to do next in this video. But let's check it for first with the default behavior. The default is that you have always one user as soon as you add string security, um, your application is secured. You can see the password in the console and then I can go to the browser, call localhost port 8080, then we will see the index page. Oh, I'm still logged in from a previous session. So let me log out first. Yeah, so we see the application. I log in and I can use the default username user and the password. So I sign in and now you see I'm logged in as user. I can also switch to the admin page and that is the issue what we have right now here. The admin page expects us to have the role admin but we are logged in as user and our default user has no roles. Yeah, those, that is the issue. Um, let's now create our own users and give them roles. Yeah. So therefore we go to the spring security configuration and we create a bean for that. And that is the user details service. That shall be our users. Um, what we have to give back here is some kind of yeah, user store and I go for an in-memory user store. So we use the in-memory user details manager to manage um, the users of our application. And so far it has no users. So let's create and define the users. I do this right now also in uh, this configuration because it's just a demo. Yeah and we keep it in memory. So let's build our user. Therefore, I use the user builder and every user needs a username. I want to have one user called user and a password. And beside the password, we have to define the roles. If we wouldn't define the roles right now, even if we are not using them in the first step, um, the the, we would get a runtime error. So we define the role user for the user with the name user, and we have to build this user since this was a user builder. Then I can add this user to my in memory user details manager. I want to have one more user. So let's quickly copy this piece of code. And my second user shall be called admin with the name admin and the password top. Now let me change the password to secret one. And here we have top. Um, the admin needs to be also added to the in-memory user details manager. And the admin needs one more role for later. So that shall be the role admin. If I would start it now, I would get another issue because it's not allowed to have the passwords not encrypted. Yeah, So Spring expects the user with encrypted passwords and those passwords are not encrypted. So we need something for the encoding of the passwords for the encryption. Yeah, so we make another bean password encoder. And our passwords shall be encrypted. So I return new, I return new decrypt password encoder. It comes with a spring framework. So if we have this as a bean, we can use it here to encode our passwords and then we are good to go. Okay. 
That's it. Now we have the user details service, which contains two different users, which have different sets of roles and they are stored in memory and their passwords are encrypted and there are more options. Yeah, I can, let's check this user details service um, by opening the type hierarchy. And here we see that user details manager extends user details service. And as user details manager, we have, as we are using the in memory user details manager to just store the users in memory. But there's also the option to store them in a relational database because we have here the JDBC user details manager. That is something what you probably have in your world if you have stored the users in a database and then the passwords are encrypted in the database. That's why we need also the encoder to, to yeah, read the passwords and check if everything is working. Um, yeah, but that for, for demo reasons, I go here today with in memory user details manager because of course it's simpler. Yeah. So let's test the application. I log out first. Then I'm on the index page. I try to log in as user. That works. If I go to the admin page, I'm allowed to see the admin page. So our authorization topic is still not so solved. We see the user has now the role user, but we need to have the role admin. So that is currently wrong. And if I would log in as admin, Then I'm allowed again to see the page. I have also the role admin, but since uh, the user was also allowed to see this page, yeah, that is the problem. So how can we deal with roles? Therefore we go back to the security configuration and we have to adapt this part here. Yeah? So for every incoming HTTP request for slash admin, we want to check this by roles. Yeah? So we can use a different method called has role or has roles if we would accept more than one role, uh, has any role it is. So has role is what I want to show you. And we want that the user which is logged in um, who wants to see the slash admin page uh, needs the role admin. Application already restarted, so let's get back to the browser, directly log out, log in as user, go to the admin page, and that is exactly what we need. It looks like an error, but if you read the details, here we see we get 403, which is a HTTP code for forbidden. So we are not allowed as a user to see the admin page, yeah? and that is now exactly what we want. Yeah? Of course, you can adapt this white, white label error page so that it is a clear, nice HTML page, but I didn't do this since the rest of my pages also is not very nice, as you can see here. So I log out and let's see if it works now for the admin. Go to the admin page and here you see now it's still working but it was not working for the user so now we have the check for the roles of the logged in admin user since the admin user has the role admin he is allowed to go to the page which is slash admin and that's why we see exactly this and yeah that is how in spring security the authentication authorization based on roles works yeah we can um, define it really in our security filter chain. We can define which HTTP request uh, path needs which role, or if we just need the authentication as we have seen before, or we give, or if we give free access to anything. Yeah. So in this video, the idea was that you see how powerful spring security is and how easily you can adapt it and what it brings to you so that you can just use it and provide security, authorization, authentication and role-based concept um, to your application. And that is what 
I showed you today. One more remark, yeah, the request measures, what you see here, that is now with Spring Boot 3 or Spring Security 6, the mandatory name, how to define it. In earlier versions, it was called end measures, but the end matcher method uh, disappeared now. It was already before deprecated and uh, now it is request matcher. So with Spring Security 6, some more method names change. So this one is also a new name. I used different names uh, with Spring Boot 2.7 or 6. Yeah. So just keep this in mind that some of the methods you might know from previous versions changed and have now different names and also slightly different um, implementations. Yeah. yeah. So I hope you liked my video and it was helpful for you to understand it. So please give me a thumb up, subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye bye.